Okay, in this video, we are going to have a look at error detection over the RS-485 link. And you can see on my SCAMP 2E board, my RS-485 output is labeled A and B, so it's a twisted pair output. It's differential UART, and it has very high noise immunity. Now we could drive RS-485 devices over a short distance, but when we get into longer distances, we want some kind of error detection, because we could run this up to one kilometer. So the error detection that we're going to use is called CRC, a cyclic redundancy check, and it involves a generator polynomial. Now you've probably seen these in data sheets. If you look at the Della Semiconductor DS18B20, that's a temperature sensor, when they send out the temperature data over the one-wire protocol, they include a CRC check. And the polynomial that they use is x to the 8 plus x to the 5 plus x to the 4 plus 1, and they use shift and exclusive OR functions to calculate the CRC. Now I'd like to use the Modbus polynomial for my CRC check. It's a 16-bit CRC and the polynomial is x to the 16 plus x to the 15 plus x squared plus 1. Now if we expand it, we're going to get x to the 16 plus x to the 15 plus x to the 14. It goes 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So x to the 0 would be 1. Now x to the 16 will have a 1 as a coefficient x to the 15 will have a 1 as a coefficient, x squared will have a 1, and then we'll have a 1 at the very end. Now if we bring down the coefficients and we truncate the very first one, the x to the 16, we're going to have 1, 0, 0, 0, we're going to have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, and that's the hex 8, 0, 0, 5. So that's going to be our polynomial value, but I'm going to use the reverse polynomial or reflected. So if we start here and we go in this direction, so 1, 0, 1, 0, that's A, then we have 0, 0, and 0, 0, 0, 1, that's 1. So our reflected polynomial is A, 0, 0, 1, and that's what I'm going to use. So if I want to send three bytes, hex, hex 1, 2, hex 3, 4, and hex 5, 6, we change that into a continuous binary bit stream and we divide it by this polynomial value, A001, and that will give us our CRC value. Okay, I got TerraTerm up and running on my computer, and it's connected to my SCAMP 2E board. And I have some code running to calculate Modbus CRCs. And since we're running forth, it's interactive, so it makes it very easy to play around with CRCs. So first of all, we have to initialize the CRC register. We have to put a value, uh, initial value into the CRC register. And we're going to use FFFF. And then I'm going to put in three bytes. So 1, 2, hex 1, 2, CRC, 3, 4, CRC. We'll make it simple. 5, 6, CRC. And we'll calculate the CRC. We'll print it. We got 3B47. So I'm do it again. This time I'll enter zeros as our initial value. And we'll do the same thing. 1, 2, CRC. 3, 4, CRC, and 5, 6. And we'll look at the CRC checksum. FB36. So remember those two values. Initial value of FFFF gave us 3B47. And initial value of 0, we got FB36. So we're going to go to a CRC calculator online, and we're going to check out these values. Okay, I brought up an online CRC calculator. And the input... I got the three bytes, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the input is hex, output is hex. And if we look out down at the protocol, we'll go down to Modbus right here. And you can see the answer, the CRC is 3B47. That's what we got. That's with the initial value of all Fs. Now if we go to the top, right here, the initial value of all zeros, which was the second thing that we did, we get FP36. And that's what we got. And this is actually IBM's uh, CRC. So the Modbus works. That's the one I use. We got 3B47. So it checks out on the online calculator. Okay, here's the code running on the SCAMP2E board. It's written in Flashforth. So here's our word, CRC. So the first thing we do, we enter our initial value of FFFF. Then after that, we run CRC through all the bytes. And you can see it's a shift and exclusive OR function. And we're using... A001 as our polynomial, and we run that for each byte, 
and then after we finish we print CRC and I'll print the value our CRC value so here's a little test program so here's our initial value FFFF then we enter our bytes one two three four five six and we can keep going as many bytes as you want and after we come to the end of the data we go print CRC and it'll give us our CRC value okay let's say we have an ROV a remote operated vehicle it's an underwater vehicle that we want to control using RS45 and we have a hundred foot tethered line running down to the ROV we could use a protocol like this one here it's a very simple packet protocol so our first byte is 7F that's our starting byte then we have a count byte that's how many bytes are in the data field and here's our data field then we have our CRC high and CRC low byte so the data field could contain joystick data to control the thrusters in ROV and we send down the packets and they're, they're streamed continuously and at the receiving end it checks the CRC if it's correct then it applies the data, the joystick data, to the thrusters. Now on the receiving end this is the fast way to check for a valid CRC. So we enter the data that we get that's coming in. First of all we put in, we put in our initial value and then we go 1, 2, CRC Now we know the CRC is 3B47, so we'll put it in in reverse. So we'll go 47 CRC, and then 3B CRC. Now the, the answer should be zero if the, if the CRC checksum was correct. So we'll print out the CRC, we get zero, and we know that data packet was correct. Okay, so if you're running very long lines, out of the RS-45 port and you're running a critical application, now you know how to incorporate CRC error checking into your project.